Okay, welcome to lesson 9.6, uh, special right triangles and believe it or not, trigonometric ratios. That's kind of, kind of scary sounding. Um, we've already talked a little bit about right triangles with the Pythagorean theorem and you can use the Pythagorean theorem to kind of derive the information that's uh, being presented today, but I'm just going to kind of give you the information and hope that you can put it to memory. There are two special right triangles that we're going to be looking at. Remember, right triangle has a 90 degree angle. There's a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle. And then there's the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. Now notice if you add up the measures, you get 180. As we know, uh, is true with the um, sums of the measures of the interior angles of any triangle. It always adds up to 180, 180 degrees. But look at the relationship here. With a 45, 45, 90, the legs are the same size. I've labeled them as A. Uh, so if this is 10, then this is 10. If this is 100, then this is 100. This makes the triangle isosceles. It has two sides that are of the same length. And the hypotenuse can be found by taking the side of either, uh, the length of either of the two sides, the two legs, and multiplying it by the square root of 2. So like if A is 10, then this is 10 times the square root of 2. And this works every time. And it works backward, by the way. If I know the hypotenuse, I can find the length of either one of the legs by taking the length of the hypotenuse and reversing it, dividing by the square root of 2 to find the length of one of the legs. And there's a similar nice uh, relationship with the three sides of a 30, 60, 90. Now, with a 30, 60, 90, we do not have isosceles. We have all three sides of different lengths. That's called scalene. The shorter of the two legs, you say, well, how do you know this one's the shorter of the leg just by the looks? Well, it's opposite the 30 degree angle. That's the shorter leg, this would be the longer leg, and then this would be the hypotenuse. The shorter leg, if we know that, we can find the hypotenuse by doubling the length of the shorter leg. So if this is 10, then this is 20. And the length of the longer leg can also be found from the length of the shorter leg by taking this value here and multiplying it by the square root of 3. Now here I have the square root of 2 and here I have the square root of 3. One way to remember which one goes with which is that this only has two sides, two sides that are of different lengths. This one, all three sides are of different lengths, and that's the three. That might help you to remember. So I'm going to use first the 45, 45, 90 to work the next couple, three problems here. So I'm going to have this diagram here to look off of if I need it. The corner shelf in Tim's bathroom is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So a 45, 45, 90 triangle here. So I'll quickly sketch that kind of sloppily. And it says the longest edge of the shelf is 17 feet. Well, that would be the hypotenuse is 17 feet. You're to find the lengths of the two shorter sides. Well, the two shorter sides, remember, are the same length. And to go from the hypotenuse to the leg, we're going to take 17 and we're going to divide it by the square root of 2. Now, I'm going to get my calculator out. And I'm going to punch this out on my calculator as 17 divided by the square root of 2. And I get this to be approximately, and I'm going to round to the tenth, 12.0. And this would be in feet. So these are about 12 each. And this one turns out to be 17. I get 12.02081520. It is an irrational number, but I just rounded it to the nearest tenth. Now, if you're lucky, it'll come out evenly as the next couple of examples uh, are are going to come out very nice. I have another 45, 45, 90 here, but this time I know one of the legs. So if this is 7, then that means y is 7, because the legs are the same length. And the hypotenuse, which in this case is x, is the length of the leg times the square root of 2. So this is 7 times the square root of 2, which I would probably just leave it that way, but if they ask for it as a decimal, remember that you just grab a calculator, multiply 7 times the square root of 2, and this comes out to be about 9.9, .9, which is approximately 9.9. .9. Very similar over here, only I have one measure, and that's the hypotenuse. I know the legs. They're 8, so x would be, since it's a 45, 45, 90, 8 times the square root of 2. And again, I can just punch that out on the calculator. 8 times the square root of 2, uh, in case they ask for a decimal. 11.3. So this is approximately 11.3. Now this is a better answer because it's exact. This is a better answer because this is exact. 
This is technically a better answer because it's exact, although it's not in simplest radical form because we do have a square root in the denominator. We don't like that. That's why I went ahead and changed it to a decimal. All right, now we'll look at the 30-60-90. Okay, now let's do the 30-60-90. Find the unknown lengths. Write your answers in the simplest form. Well, in this case, I have my right triangle. I have my 90 degree angle, my 60 degree angle, my 30 degree angle. The side that's opposite the 30 degree angle, remember that's the shorter leg. This would be the longer leg and of course this is clearly a hypotenuse. Now the uh, uh, original drawing that I have that showed the relationship of the sides is no longer up on the board but you should have it in your notes. We can go from the hypotenuse to the shorter leg. Remember the shorter leg, the hypotenuse had the relationship that this was twice the size of this. So if this guy is 18, that means x is half of 18 or 9. And to go from the shorter leg to the longer leg, then what we do is we take the length of the shorter leg, 9, and we multiply it by the square root of 3. And I'm going to leave my answer in that form since it says simplest form. Now you can grab a calculator and punch that in if they need it as a decimal. Now look how easy this was. From the hypotenuse to the shorter leg by taking half, from the shorter leg to the a uh, longer leg by multiplying it by the square root of 3. Over here, another 30, 60, 90, not perfectly drawn to scale. And I have, in this case, the shorter leg. That's the best one to have because it's very simple to get the other two from the shorter leg. The hypotenuse is double the shorter leg, so it's 12. The longer leg is the length of the shorter leg times the square root of 3, so y equals 6 square roots of 3. Now it can get a little more complicated if they give you this side as an integer and you have to find this side because then you're dividing by the square root of 3. But that's not the case on these very first examples. Alright, now we have been dealing with certain types of right triangles and the reason that we're dealing with trigonomet uh, trigonometry in this section is because we're going to look at what we call right triangle trigonometry. And there are six trigonometric functions or ratios. We're looking at three of them today. We're looking at the tangent ratio, the sine ratio, and the cosine ratio. All of these are on the proficiency test uh, for, uh, for math. So in this case, we're going to look at my drawing here of a right triangle. Here's angle A. I'm, I'm doing this all based on angle A. Based on angle A, this leg right here, this side right, hop, right here, is adjacent to angle A. It's made up, making up part of angle A. So we call this the adjacent side. This side over here, this leg over here, it's opposite angle A. So we call this side the opposite. And of course, this is the hypotenuse. So we have the adjacent, we have the opposite, and we have the hypotenuse. All right, now, the tangent ratio is for an angle, angle A, is comparing two of the sides. It's comparing the opposite side and the adjacent side. So it's the ratio of the side opposite, the angle to the side adjacent to the angle. That's the tangent. All right, the sine of the angle is, this, is the ratio of the side opposite the angle compared to the length of the hypotenuse. And the cosine function, the cosine of A, notice these abbreviations for tangent, it looks like tan. For sine, four letters, they abbreviate it to three, it looks like sin. And for cosine, it looks like cos or something here, or cos. The cosine of angle A is the side adjacent to the angle A compared to the hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse. Now with that in mind, I'll do an example. Now I'm just going to go ahead and erase here. It's going to kind of smear, as this does not erase very well. I'm going to draw a right triangle. It does not have to be a special right triangle, just any right triangle. And I'm going to call this angle A. And I'm going to say that this length is 3, this length is 4, this length is 5. And if you use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem, you'll find that this indeed, 3 squared plus 4 squared does equal 5 squared. That's called a Pythagorean triple, by the way. The 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple. So is the 5, 12, 13. 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. Those are good ones to memorize. They come into play a lot. But I'm going to find the tangent, the sine, and the cosine of angle A. The tangent of angle A, remember right here, it's the side opposite. So the side opposite is this side 3 compared to the side adjacent, which would be this leg here, which is 4. So it's 3 fourths. The sine of angle A, and again I'm using the abbreviations, the sine here is the side opposite to the hypotenuse. So opposite would be 3, hypotenuse would be 5. 
Now, of course, if I'm using this angle, then this is my adjacent and this is my opposite, but since we're using this angle right here, that's the way they're set up. And the cosine of angle A is equal to the side adjacent to the hypotenuse. This is the side adjacent for this is the hypotenuse, so it would be four-fifths. And there's all sorts of uh, things that you can do finding measurements of angles using trigonometry. This is the basic ratio. Now, one way to remember all this, because that's a lot to remember, is to remember the Sokotoa mnemonic. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. And if you remember that, then you have these three trig ratios, and you'll be able to write them any time that you need. But as always, remember to practice, practice, practice.